the young couple did not want to go to the hotel, so they went to the abandoned factory, intended to copy the homework left by the teacher. The girl just squatted down. Suddenly, she screamed in terror. Not far away, in the grass, there was a disfigured corpse. He was lying in a rather bizarre position. There was a scale by his side. At one end was a freshly cut piece of flesh. The weight was the same as when the victim was born. Police officer Tom pulled out a piece of paper. On it was written, feel the pain of childbirth. The police asserted, this is a serial murder case. Because there was a homicide not long ago, the body of the victim was eaten by dogs. The police also found the same paper. On it was written the torture of dog food. After detailed investigation, the victim in the first case had a dog. But in order to live with her boyfriend, she abandoned the dog in cold blood. The victim in the second case was a fat man, a man in his thirties who was still at home with his parents, extremely disrespectful of his mother. Tom speculated the killer was doing God's work to satisfy his own sense of justice. The police department held a meeting to discuss the case. The killer always kills on rainy days because the rain can hide his whereabouts and can destroy evidence. So every rainy day since then, they have to be very vigilant. Just at that time, there was a major breakthrough. The existence of the victims intersected. The killer wasn't a randomly selected victim. They were both jurors in a trial three years ago. The trial was about a murderer. He used crystal resin to fix the girl's body and made a specimen of it and showed it to the public because of the perversion of humanity. This case also caused a strong discussion in the community. Tom rushed to call his wife. His wife Jenny was also one of the jurors. But two weeks ago, Jenny was unhappy with Tom and left home with his son. Now, he not only can't get through to his phone, he also doesn't know where his wife and son are. Meanwhile, other jurors were victimized one after another. Some of them were cut in half. They were given to their wives and mistresses. This is the torture of love shared equally. Some were frouncing in the freezer as ice beauties. This is the punishment for eternal beauty. Some were given numerous silver needles in their mouths. This is the torture of a thousand needles. Tom was terrified. He rushed to check Jenny's recent phone records. He found that he had been in frequent contact with Lisa recently. Tom got to Lisa first, although he got a good scolding, but still told them. Jenny was staying at her house. A colleague had just been to Lisa's house. He blamed Lisa's boyfriend for not telling the truth and for interfering with the police. But Lisa was stunned. Everyone rushed back to Lisa's house. They passed by the killer's car. Tom told his colleague to go upstairs to check. He drove after the killer. During the chase, the colleagues reported Jenny and her son were not at Lisa's house. Most likely, the killer hid them in the trunk. At this moment, a car rushed out. Tom dodged a late, directly involved in a car accident. He grabbed the killer's leg. He begged the killer to give him back his wife and son. The murderer kicked Tom directly. As a family member of the victim, Tom was forbidden to participate in the serial murder investigation. But he was desperate to know what happened. So he asked his partner out. They really didn't have a clue. And that's when his partner was staring out the window. Tom looked out the window. The killer was watching them silently. Silently. This cop's life is on the line. His life is in the hands of the thin tie around his neck. The other end of the tie is in the killer's hand. As soon as he lets go, the cop would be dead. Tom approached slowly with his hands in the air. He listened to the killer's angry accusations. It turns out he doesn't want to avenge the murder of the girl. Because he's the real killer in this case. The girl's resin was his perfect piece of art. And the jury gave the masterpiece to someone else. He wanted revenge on these people. By now the rain had cleared. The killer scratched his neck a few times. Turned his head to the police and said goodbye. Then he released his grip on the tie. His partner was killed in the line of duty. The killer escaped. Tom blamed himself. If he hadn't called out to his partner, this would not have happened. To avoid further trouble until the case is over, Tom had to be kept in custody by the directorate. In the car, Tom pretended to vomit. He knocked down the two comrades around him and took the opportunity to fall out of the car smoothly. He wanted to catch the murderer with his own hands to avenge his partner's death. Tom changed his cell phone card to prevent the police from finding out. Then he secretly bought a gun as a weapon. Because the sun came out, the killer scratched his neck. So Tom went to an internet cafe, searching for information on UV allergies. After several hospitals in a row, only to confirm that the specialized hospital has such a patient, Tom told the director of the height of the killer to force her to provide relevant information. After receiving the information, he immediately drove to the murderer's house. Tom carefully sneaked into the house, seeing the killer's frog hood. He was even more convinced that the killer was here. So Tom pushed open a door, only to find that there was a monitor inside the house. There was a piece of paper next to it. It said, visit the work of torture. Before Tom could even think about it, he was attacked from behind. Tom and the killer after a fight, but the killer won with a small sigh. He was knocked out by the killer. When he woke up, he found himself in a secret room. Inside the room were two mannequins. 
one large and one small. The little mannequin was holding a big box. Inside the box were a bunch of puzzle pieces and a tape recorder. Tom angrily knocked over the puzzle pieces. He came to the door but found a combination lock on the door. Then Tom realized he needs the puzzle to find out the password. A burger suddenly fell down from the ventilation duct. It seems that this is Tom's food for the day. He had to eat the burger to save his strength to solve the answer in order to escape the secret room. When he managed to finish the puzzle, he found the English word for eat. Tom could not wait to enter the password. He didn't care about that much. He opened the door and grabbed the gun and went out. This is where the killer made the burgers. There was meat and hair on the table. There was a picture of his wife and son on the door. Tom's mind went blank. He slowly made his way to the cabinet, opening the door. What he saw inside? Surprisingly, he cried out of fear. What kind of human torture is this? The man looked at the head of his wife and son in the cabinet. Could not help but cry out loud, thinking of the burgers in the room. Could that be a patty made of their flesh? The killer appears behind Tom. He describes in graphic detail how his wife and son begged for their lives. Tom fired in anger, but with his severe wounds. He was not able to kill. The killer dodged the bullet. He ran straight out of the room. Tom was right behind him. Now he had only one belief. That is to kill the murderer. To avenge the death of his wife and son, they ran around a few corners. There were two frog monsters here. One of them ran away. He heard a slight choking sound from the frog monster. Tom felt strange. He gets a little closer. Took off her hood. Turns out it's his wife Jenny. The head in the cupboard was a fake. The two of them embraced each other and cried. But then the killer appeared. He grabbed Tom's son with one hand. With another hand, he pointed a gun at the couple. The killer asks Tom to make a choice. If he wanted to save his son, Tom could only kill Jenny with his own hands. Otherwise, his son will be killed by him. This is the killer's last piece of art. Tom hesitated to do it. Jenny grabbed the gun and pointed it at herself. In the heat of the moment, Tom shouted and turned around. And the killer shot at the same time. Both of them fell to the ground with severe injuries. Jenny clung to her son who was in danger. I didn't think the murderer could still get up. He wanted to continue to hurt the family of three. Fortunately, Tom's police colleagues arrived in time. They surrounded the murderer's house. The killer rushed out of the room. The sun was shining outside. He was allergic to ultraviolet light. He only could scream on his knees, drenched in blood. And so the killer was apprehended. The serial murder case is over. After all this, Tom felt that family was the most important thing. So his son participated in the school field day. He took time off from work to be a part of his child's childhood. He took the camera from Jenny and took pictures of his son's heroic performance. But Tom didn't even notice. In the sunlight, his son was constantly scratching his neck, the same as the murderer. 